digital news outlet and our primary uh, mission is in-depth journalism, uh, explanatory investigative journalism that looks at the really complex issues facing our city. Um, from health and housing and jobs and schools to city government and politics, but we have another dimension of our mission as well, and that is to celebrate our local culture in all its uh, diversity and vibrance. So when local artists Ron Fortier and Kat Knudsen approached me some months back, about starting an arts club similar to the one in Detroit. Uh, we at the New Bedford Light just jumped at the opportunity. Um, with Ron and Shelley's guidance, we kicked our news team, our newsroom team into high gear. We recruited our fabulous hosts and recruited the nine artists whose work you're, you're going to see tonight. Our hosts are accomplished artists themselves. Shelley Carduce is a graduate of UMass Dartmouth where she earned a BFA in sculpture. And for the past 20 years, she's used her love for creativity and her passion for entrepreneurship in a, in a variety of very interesting ways. I won't list them all, it would take a while. Um, Fitz is a also a New Bedford artist, a coordinator of creative programs for local youth and creator of the New Dedford Project, a very interesting graphic novel that I would say is a community work in progress. Um, he is also a graphic designer and self-taught painter. So I am going to turn it over to Shelly and Fitz. They're gonna take you through the process for tonight and then take us through the, the wonderful artworks that we're gonna see. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of in the mood to buy some art. So Shelly and Fitz, take it away. All right, so happy to be here. And when I was asked to co-host with Fitz, I just said, yes, sign me up. So um, we're psyched to be here and really excited, especially for the artists that are presenting tonight. Uh, again, I'm Shelly Cardus, and I'm excited to let you know a little bit about how it works and then pass it over to Fitz. So each artist, we have nine artists tonight, they're all going to have five minutes. They'll be presenting two pieces of work. During that time, we're hoping that they allow some time for some questions and answers. And you all that are attending can ask some of those questions and answers by clicking on the bottom of your screen, the Q&A, and Fitz and I would be happy to ask some of those questions and answers for you. And now over to you, Fitz, to go over the rest of the rules. Hey, hey my name is Fitz Carmel Lamar. Uh, you can call me Fitz. Uh, so while the artists are displaying and presenting their artwork, uh, we'll be showing their contact info, so which will also be available in the chat and also available at newbedfordlight.org forward slash find dash arts dash club. Uh, see something you want? Uh, you contact that artist directly. Uh, no middleman here. Uh, and don't forget about the uh, session we're going to have, the Afterglow, where you can ask all those burning questions once you see uh, the artists talk about their artwork and everything. Uh, and from, you know, uh, what inspires them, their favorite color. Are you ticklish, Butch McCarthy? Uh, go ahead, Shelly. <laughs> Oh, actually, we're going to Robert Deck, aren't we? Yeah, let's start introducing those yes, artists. Let's get started. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right, Robert Deck. So, uh, Robert, why don't you tell us a little something about uh, what we got here? Because I'm already uh, loving that eye right there in the middle. I was drawn right in. Okay, so uh, can you see me and hear me? We can definitely see your artwork and hear you clearly. Okay, that's good. Uh, well, this is um, an acrylic painting that's on top of collage ripped and torn pieces of paper that I used to put this image together. This, this piece has sort of an interesting history as far as, my, as far as my artwork is concerned because I actually started this painting 20 years ago and finished it about six or seven months ago. Um, there was a long hiatus in between. Um, when I started it and when I finished it, because I basically had put it away for a while because uh, I was getting really frustrated with it and didn't like the way it was going. And then I basically forgot about it for 20 years until, until I saw it and I said, well, 
I guess I can do something with this. And uh, basically what it is all about besides the materials that I just mentioned was um, sort of a uh, respect for our environment and, uh, and the possible uh, Armageddon that, that can happen with uh, global warming and nuclear war and everything. And that's why you see the, uh, the fiery uh, edges um, sort of vignetting uh, the color, the natural landscape in the middle and, and that ever watching eye um, is just seeing what's going down there. So uh, that's what that particular piece is about. Um, this piece here, um, it's called Snowbird. And basically this is a slightly different technique, uh, although it, there is paper underneath and uh, I do use acrylic on top of anything I put down on paper because if you put oil on paper, it's eventually gonna rot it. So the uh, acrylic pretty much seals it in the gloss medium that I use. But this is a photo transfer, which is actually a photograph that I took of this bird out my window uh, about the week before, before Christmas. And um, I just thought it looked kind of neat with this red bird in the sort of stark uh, landscape um, and uh, with a little little coating of snow. I, I, I kind of embellished the bird in the snow a little bit. Uh, I added a little bit more bird. It wasn't quite that chubby, but I wanted the red to stand out more. And uh, I embellished the snow a little bit because it was just a sort of a, a frosting of snow. But uh, I wanted to give it more of that uh, winter feeling. To the piece. So um, underneath, as I said, is a photo transfer. So it's an actual photograph that I transferred onto the canvas by pretty much gluing it on uh, the canvas uh, face down with gloss medium. Then I rubbed the backing off, uh, which I um, came up with the surface to paint on. If you look in the background and you see some of the blues and some of the uh, ochres and some of the greens poking through in a, a few areas of kind of a purple color, that is actually the uh, photo transfer. And um, then the acrylic paint, of course, is put on top of that. And uh, my work basically is just to explore and express the magnificence of the things that we see in nature, not necessarily as a super realistic uh, approach, but just my, my interpretation. And uh, I'd like to use paint. Right on, right on. Is that a cardinal by any chance? Um, yes, it's a male oh, cardinal. Oh, right on, right on. Favorite, my favorite bird. So I've, yeah. uh, okay, okay. Right. But on. it's not really, as I said before, it's not really that overweight. <laughs> I just wanted them to show up a little bit more. Right on, no, no. I'm right. loving this piece. I love how that red really pops. It's great. Thank you. The uh, red down the bottom was actually a reflection in the window that I took the picture from of Christmas lights, but uh, oh, I, okay, okay. I kind of distorted it a little bit more to give it sort of a natural sort of leaf-like feel. So, Great, and so this is on stretch canvas. It's 24 inches by 18. Can you just tell a little bit about the edges of the canvas? Is um, it painted over or do you have wood yeah, on the, the sides? It, no, it's actually painted over edges on this one. The previous okay. one is, Great. the previous painting that I showed uh, um, was framed. But uh, this particular one, the uh, what I've been doing with the photo transfers, I've been wrapping them right around the edges of the canvas and uh, uh, just painting, you know, continuing the imagery on the edges of the canvas as well. Awesome. Well, Robert, thank you so much. That is just about five minutes. So for anybody that's interested in purchasing or asking any questions, you can see uh, Robert's information here. And as a reminder, you can uh, mark that down or go on the New Bedford Light website to learn more. Thank you so much, Robert. We're gonna move on. Can to I add one? Server. Can I add one yes. more quick thing? Um, yes. If you'd like to see my work in person, I'm going to be part of the uh, South Coast Artist um, Art Ride uh, in July, July 16th, and you can come down to my studio uh, to actually see the work then for the Open Studio Weekend. Awesome! Thank Bye. you so much. Right on. You're welcome. All right. Next up from New Bedford, Mass, we have Mary Montero. Let's hear about your two pieces. Hey, thanks for um, doing this. I was really excited to be a part of the first night. Um, 
I am painting full time now. I have been a freelance illustrator since I was in my early 20s, a way long time ago. And now I have the freedom to paint. So I'm very excited. Um, this first piece is part of my Nature's Sanctuary series. Uh, I uh, am inspired by nature, by walks in the woods. And one day I was walking through the woods and in between two really tall pines and the light was just right. And I felt like I was in a cathedral. And I remembered um, Monet's cathedral series of Rowan Cathedral. So I went home, got a canvas going, uh, pretty much the same dimensions as uh, Monet's cathedrals. I used the same color palette and similar composition, but I turned it into a forest. Uh, and my goal is to present nature as a sanctuary and hopefully inspire reverence and respect for it so we can protect it. Um, this is a, is a really kind of limited palette. Uh, it's only five colors plus white. Um, one of the greens that Monet used was called emerald green, which I had never used before. It's really this kind of funky, almost like a pastel kind of green. Uh, but it really blends well with all the other colors. So it was, it was a really fun piece, took a long time <laughs> to do, because it was like one of those things that just never seemed to end. <laughs> um, Monet said at best, anyone who feels they finished a painting is either completely arrogant. <laughs> but anyway, uh, at some point I felt like it was finished um, and I have um, three others that are in the same in the same series, different color ways. This is a gallery wrap canvas, and I do paint all the way around the edge, uh, so that if someone's looking at it from the side, you still see the painting continued. Excellent. And then next, this was a wonderful pond in North Dartmouth uh, on Old Fall River Road. Uh, happened to be driving home one day and the, the colors just really made me stop. So I took a photo and, and started a canvas. This is also a gallery wrap canvas. It's a two inch profile. So it's, it's got quite a presence. And it was the first square composition I did, which was really fun uh, because it's easy to get the eye to move around and continue to move. But I call this one integration because what struck me about the scene was how all the separate elements kind of blended into each other. Like the pink in the tree became the reflection in the water, became the, the pink lotuses that were floating. And there was this continual movement of form uh, changing into other forms. And what the way I like to portray form in my paintings is to see form as transparent. It's not solid. It's this energy moving through all of these things. And, and making a painting is a perfect analogy to that of everything in the universe being made of the same energy. So we as artists make our universes out of paint and all the trees made of paint and the water is made of paint. So it's a really great sense of unity. So that's, uh, that's me and I'm, I'm continuing to paint and creating more nature sanctuary series, um, hope to have a show someday. That water is gorgeous <laughs> on integration. I am like that reflection in the lower left-hand corner is like, I'm loving that. Yeah, it really feels like water. And then, yeah, yeah. I zoom in and it's the the way you, you, you've blended textures of, trees and leaves and water and it, it 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 works with just little fine details in there that separate the the, the different parts of them like i dig it i dig it <laughs> yeah water is really tricky to paint because it's it doesn't look real unless it's moving so you have to create that illusion well, you did a great job because it definitely looks like water. Uh, Mary, before we move on, any last things you want to tell the attendees? Um, I just uh, would encourage people to look at nature in a new way. Uh, nature is really art. Uh, really appreciate how a tree is 
growing and comes from a solid mass and gets finer and finer and finer. And just, you know, just really look at it and appreciate it. And because we need our trees. <laughs> right on. Awesome. Thank right you right so on. much. Thank you so, so much. That was great. And now for those art lovers out there who love contrast, we have uh, David Dower here. And so just contrasting from one artist to the next, uh, the colors on this and these pieces, like I am, I'm a huge fan of just the palette of, it's fun as soon as I see it. Like I was in a serene mode just a moment ago, but now like, it's like party time. It's like, yeah, you know, I feel like dancing. Yeah, yeah. It's like somebody's passing around some sugar cubes or something. <laughs> <laughs> go, go for it. Go for it, David. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you for the uh, nice inter introduction. Um, I am known for my color. Um, those artists who know me, um, yes. I, um, my art background came out of Southeastern Massachusetts University. That ages me, um, UMass Dartmouth. Um, I've been creating since I'm five years old, as I recollect, um, drawing. Um, I went through the fine arts program down there and um, got a master's degree elsewhere and came back for design. And most of my adult life, I've worked as a designer in the publishing and advertising industries. Um, back in 2016, I decided to retire and um, got back into my painting after not touching a brush for probably over 40 years. Um, my process, um, these two pieces that I'm showing, I've done on a recent vacation. I always travel with some supplies and it's a, a small departure um, from what I've been doing. Um, all my work, um, I works with flowers and fantasy, storytelling um, and how I go about it is, um, or the departure for me is what you see in the background, you would see in about a two inch frame on my larger watercolors that are about 26 by 36 sort of, and uh, my larger paintings. Uh, but this was a great way to get into this where I've been thinking about encompassing the whole background with my stories. Um, I start with a pencil drawing, use some fine ink work, and then I start painting my by my own numbers, my imaginary numbers, things just sort of flow. Um, the stories I believe in all of these come out of what's happening in the world today, uh, my environment, what I'm thinking. Um, I pretty much put myself into a meditative state when I'm uh, working on these backgrounds and even the pieces and quite everything is intuitive. People ask me about the color and I just say it happens. I, I have no idea how it happens. It just happens. I've always been able to um, do do that. Watercolor is very new to me. I've been doing it for about two years. I started uh, when we were about to move and I needed something a little bit more transportable. Um, so I work in acrylics and in um, watercolor. You'll see fla flowers is my departure. Um, in this piece, um, which is called Conversations, um, my flowers before I did my backgrounds, before I did my frames, there are always stories. They replace in many ways uh, humans. Um, there are conversations between them. Um, someone recently asked me about the ogre in this and why I put an ogre in there. And I said, I don't know, but I know that there's a war going on. And I know there are people that aren't very nice out there. And I know there are people trying to push away the ogres of the world and um, it just happens. I can't um, tell you why and I, um, people see different things. Um, I see a woman on the top left um, after the fact. Um, someone may not see that. Someone, people tell me what they see. Um, so I think, you know, that's really it. Um, I have lots of other work, and if anyone's ever interested, they can certainly uh, come by my studio in Plymouth, Mass. 
um, by appointment, you know, just call me up and say you'd like to see uh, other work that I've done or go on my website. Um, I think that's about all I have to say about it, unless you have some questions. So David, when you say some people, you said the woman in the left corner after the fact, so you mean you didn't mean that to be a woman in the left corner? I didn't just see happened? it until I did it. It happened. Wow. Everything in the back, everything just happens. I, I, That's great. In my, in my intuitive state, in my meditative state, when I draw and do things, I'm sure there was probably a thought of a woman, or yeah. but I didn't see it. Um, that's that's all. interesting because I can see that. Yeah. Um, I, I no. Um, there's, and in fact, I see a woman or a, a female figure behind that center uh, flower on that one, uh, too. So, um, maybe may I think the flowers are being protectors as I see them, but. Um, it's open to interpretation. I've had people say that it, the psychologists would have a field day with my work. <laughs> <laughs> On the technical side, I like that you use thin lines and let the colors do a lot of the mm -hmm. talking. Oftentimes yeah. uh, in my illustrative uh, schooling or anything like that, people were always pushing me to make bolder lines. Um, so, and, and I definitely moved in that direction. So it's nice to see something with some nice thin lines that just let the colors do all the talking. So. And uh, as an added fact, I usually use um, a pen tip and ink and uh, acrylic inks now. Uh, and my pen tip, I, it's over 50 years old. I use the same one, it's still working, so. Oh, wow. That's amazing, <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Well, David, thank you so much. I hope to visit your studio someday. We're going to move on to the next artist, but so glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. And next up, we have Den Centuro. Hi there. Um, am I on? Have I got? Yep. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. All righty. Um, well, um, you can see that this is a uh, image of dance. Um, I'd long wanted to shoot dance, um, but during actual live performance, not, um, not posed dance. Most photography of dance is done as posed shots and it just leaves me cold. Um, so um, back in 2017, Jacob's Pillow, um, which is a major dance venue worldwide um, and happens to be in our backyard out in the Berkshires, um, started letting people shoot um, the dances out on their outdoor stage. Um, but the restrictions are you have to stay in your seat and you've never seen the dance before. And oh, by the way, the sun is setting behind the stage. Uh, so, um, so that made it very difficult, but I um, went out to see the dance troupe Palabolus, who um, has been around for 50 years and, and, and matter of fact, created a whole genre of dance um, when they came on the scene. Um, and I've long loved them. Um, and um, I took work, I took shots of them, um, not knowing what would happen, how it would work, stuck in my seat. Um, and I was very happy with some of the results. Um, and so were people who saw it. And um, <clears throat> I put it up on my social media and Jacob's Pillow saw it and told Palabolus about it. And Palabolus contacted me to talk, um, which I thought was great considering the circumstances. Um, so um, then when I go out on shoots, I go out on shoots. I don't just carry my camera around and shoot whatever things randomly. I, I do that occasionally, but that's um, my shoots are usually done in projects. Um, so when um, Palabolus was coming out of COVID, um, and they were getting ready for their 50th anniversary tour and they contacted me and they invited me down to spend um, two days on stage with them during their dress rehearsals, um, which is exactly what I had been working for. Um, I've been, I wanted to be on stage, see the work so that I had some idea what was going to be going on um, so I could sort of anticipate and plan. Um, and Palabolus is a very energetic dance troupe. Um, they're fast, they're, um, they're um, active. Um, so shooting them in stage lighting um, while they were dancing was going to be a serious problem. Um, but um, what I 
managed to capture um, in those two days after seeing some of their stuff was um, was I was very happy with. They were very happy with. Um, and a matter of fact, um, some of those pieces were at the Z recently. Um, Palabalus came to New Bedford um, at in, in its tour um, and they were at the Z. And so for a month and a half, this work was up at the Zyterian. Um, matter of fact, you can see a video of the, the show as it was hung at the Z on my website, uh, which I believe is, yes, um, it's, yes, densantrophoto.com is right there. Um, so um, I approached my subject matter very architecturally. Um, why don't you skip to the next one? Just. Um, yeah, this is also um, the same dance, uh, same dance troupe, not the same dance. Um, Palabolus, um, they're very athletic, they're very physical. Um, <clears throat> and I ended up with 64 really great shots, which you can see on my website, they're all available to purchase. Um, one unique thing about my photography is I still print photographs. Um, this is, these are 20 by 27 um, photographs, but they are printed light on paper run through chemicals, um, which is a very different end result than you get when you shoot and when you print um, digitally, because when you shooting and exposing emulsified paper, what you get is you get color, you get saturation. If the, it goes big, sometimes you get grain. You don't get layering um, and uh, pixelation that you get when you go big with, um, with a digital print. Um, <clears throat> so all of my work is, is done that way. And what you're seeing here, except for the watermark, um, which is not on the actual prints, um, I do that so that people have a harder time stealing the stuff on the on the internet. Um, but um, but what you're seeing here is what you will see in the actual prints. These prints I have printed and mounted with no framing, no matting. Um, they're actually um, on a back straight um, and they have a UV coating on them, but it's so thin you can't tell the difference even if you saw the print next to the, the one with the UV coating. Um, and um, I don't crop, I don't do any after processing. Uh, all the work is done in the camera. So shooting these people moving fast while I'm moving with them, um, moving around on the stage, um, there are a lot of blurred shots, but <laughs> not all of them. Um, and um, I'm very happy with the results that we got here. Um, so, um, and these were these are um, mounted that way because I felt that the um, the strength of the image um, is lost when it's contained. When you try and contain this explosive dance um, inside of a mat and a frame, it just captures it and kills it. Um, whereas when it's on when it's mounted, it gives it a whole different feel. So um, I will leave it at that. And if there are questions, ask away. Thanks so much, Dan. That's just about five minutes, but Fitz, if you have any questions, go for it. Fitz, here on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, I was going to ask Dan to quickly explain that background, but if we're, you know. The background you see. Your in this background, background, yeah. Oh, my background. Because that's <laughs> traditionally the, art, the artwork that I kind of know you for. So yes. I know when people visit your artwork, they're going to, be a bit surprised as well so i want to right i i do i shoot everything architecturally and i shoot a lot of things to be perceptually difficult this the piece you're seeing behind my my head um is a uh, image that's part of my uh, my pieces parts project which is abstractions of artwork that i see um and uh it's this is a piece by subdu gupta um which um you're seeing just a small piece of it and the piece is called um uh take off your shoes and wash your hands, uh, which I thought was extremely appropriate for COVID times. Right on, right on. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated, much appreciated. All right, so next up we got uh, Alan Constant. And so uh, I, I felt like instantly I kind of recognized before I even looked at the title or anything, uh, I one of my favorite places is Sedona, Arizona. So then uh, I looked over at the name and then saw a Southern Arizona landscape and was like, oh, okay, connection. So uh, Alan, I'll let you go, uh, go ahead and uh, explain, go ahead, go for it. I, I'm, 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 I'm ready. All right, thank you. Um, can you guys see me? Absolutely. Oh, great. So uh, this piece was, and actually the other piece too, um, they're both sort of part of a series that 
um, I did. It was kind of like the last sort of tour that we were able to, last little bit of travel we were able to do right before COVID came. So um, we kind of did a big tour of Arizona and this was one of the pieces that sort of, it just kind of grabbed my imagination. Um, and, you know, with respect to both, both of these pieces, they sort of, um, in a way, I guess my approach to the medium sort of captures what I was sort of reacting to in the, in the landscape. So for example, this piece, um, I was really kind of taken with, uh, you know, with the, um, the verticality of it, the heavy sort of dense pressure and the, all of the force uh, that existed in the, you know, in the rock landscape. Um, and, I, and I really wanted to contra contrast that with the sort of the wispy kind of evanescence of the sky. And it was really sort of taken by that contrast between the two. I tried to emphasize that, I think, um, you know, with my brushwork uh, in the, you know, in the rock face itself, a lot of sort of straight pull, pulling down lines. And of course, like I said, contrasted with the wispy movement in the sky. Um, I also tried to sort of emphasize that contrast with the, with the palette, um, you know, by creating those sort of rich, rich earth red tones uh, with that sort of a cerulean colored sky. So. Um, this was uh, a quick pullover on the side of the road. I need to take a picture shot. <laughs> um, I did work from a photograph of this. I, I didn't paint it plein air, um, but uh, yeah, just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm an East Coaster, you know, I, I've grown up in New York State and Massachusetts and, and still when I get out to uh, the Southwest, I'm just kind of blown away every time. It's just these amazing landscapes uh, and, it just really grabbed me, uh, and, and as I said, this was this was one of the. I think I did a series of, I don't know, five or six of those. This piece is um, a, again the same kind of trip, but a very different sort of approach with the medium. Um, the fascination I had with this piece was this is the Grand Escalante um, the staircase in southern Utah, um, and another road shot. But the thing about this was I was really kind of it felt like a journey to sort of even let my imagination travel out to this remote spot. Um, and it, it was almost like it, um, almost like the, the landscape kind of offered some sort of inflection point or some meditation place, but it felt so distant. And, and, and uh, it was almost like a promise that you would never arrive. And, and that's why when I, when I, when I was thinking that, and I, and when I painted the road, it sort of, dissipated into those undulations uh in the landscape and and that's what that was about the road never arrives or at least it never arrived for me so uh that that was kind of the fascination for me this the promise of this uh this distant sort of concept um and i guess that's about all i have to say about those so when you when you choose a piece like this from from because this was from photograph correct yes so when you choose a piece out of, you know, the sets that you have, what, what's the process that you get into um, as you're beginning to set up this painting? Because this is the, the photograph you've chosen. Like, just let, let, I just want folks to kind of peek in there because I have yeah. processes I follow through myself, but I'm curious as to, to what yours is. Yeah, so something like this, I think I, I would, well, let me, let me start by saying I, I'm a self-taught artist. Uh, and, um, you know, I think I would probably sort of try to work with principle of thirds, uh, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, cheers. Um, and, you know, just kind of a setup. And, you know, I, I think that most of the pieces that I choose are based on, you know, an aspiration to sort of recreate the feeling of, of what it felt like to be there. So it's, it's sort of a really, intuitive kind of process. I, I do try to balance it out with some pretty rudimentary sort of, um, you know, design sort of uh, concepts, um, you know, like I said, rule of thirds and that kind of stuff. But um, it's mostly just kind of make it look good, I suppose, <laughs> have fun with it and uh, enjoy the process and really just sort of try to uh, re-experience the, um, the memories as I'm going through. Right on, right on. I dig it. I dig it. That's awesome. Alan, um, these these are great pieces. Anything else you wanna share before we move on? 
You know, not really. I'm just glad to be participating tonight and enjoying seeing the other artists work as well. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. And just a reminder to everybody, um, you know, you can contact the artist directly if you're interested in purchasing a piece or if you have any questions, jot down their information on the screen. Or if you don't, um, you can go to the website, uh, New Bedford Light and see that information. And also feel free to be asking questions um, during the time and we'll also have time to chat after. So let's move on to the next artist. Thanks again, Alan. We're about halfway through and this has been exciting so far. Next up, we have Eric Smith. Uh, like you, or can you see me? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Eric Smith. I've been painting for uh, four years. Uh, so I just brief training at community college, at Washington Community College. I took one drawing class, a uh, couple painting classes, then a color theory class. And I feel like I already had an idea of what I wanted to do, which was kind of make like a digital moving like cubist uh, look to my paintings. And it's kind of like a, kind of like jazz in a way because I prepare the palette. So I'm kind of like working with things that I like on my toolbox and from my former training and just kind of pushing and pulling space with uh, paint brushes, um, rubber furniture stoppers like this for some texture, things like that. And most of it's uh, improvised. There's no sketches, nothing. Uh, I can lose the painting. I've lost a couple of them, but I've gotten better improvising along the way after uh, these four years. And I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, also, I usually do them on panel. So I kind of like that digital look, a digital aspect, but I also want to still make it look like a painting. And because I like a lot of digital art as well. Um, if anyone has any questions or anything about pieces, let me know. But uh, I also was a formally trained musician. I went to Atlanta Institute of Music. I graduated degree in guitar performance. And after a little bit, I don't know, I just like picked up painting and I really enjoyed it. And I think I'll be playing the rest of my life, just like I'll be playing guitar for the rest of my life. Right, right. right. And can you just talk a little bit about, so like, I don't think you said this, but when you're, are you listening to certain music while you're playing these? Uh, yeah. And I feel like that does shape a lot of the pieces, especially. It feels like there's um, like movement that goes along with like melodies and beats. Oh yeah. And I feel like um, usually a lot of the, like if I listen to like a lot of jazz, a lot of jazz fusion, stuff like that, it turns like very intricate and very colorful usually. Um, there, there are times when I'll like, sometimes like I'll put down like colors beforehand and let them dry for a bit because I'm using oils, so but I, I have to wait a bit for it. And I also just want to hear more about the tools. Like oh, yeah. you showed that rubber yeah. thing. Are there various tools that you're using to create these lines, but also not just the lines, but those like like the folds in the paint. How are you doing this? Uh, you know wait, like the folds in the paint? Yeah. Like, uh, hold on. Like, could you? If you go to the red one, Brendan. Oh, okay. So you see like over the left-hand side, like right above the ones that have multiple lines. And, you know, like... I don't know how to explain it. Where it looks kind of like pink and red. Oh, like pink. Is that you're, are you do, doing that with a brush or are you use it also using like a harder tool to get those straight lines? Yeah, so for those uh, straight lines, I'm using like the rubber furniture stoppers and squeegees and stuff. But this one was all done with rubber furniture stopper. And I was just kind of like you play an instrument you figure out how you can make like different noises with it and stuff. Like based on like how hard you pick and like, uh, like your amp settings, stuff like that. And just kind of figuring out, I don't know, I like thought about it kind of like music as in like, I'm like figuring out how to make like different marks with my tools to get different effects and things like that. Can I, can I just say like, Eric, dude, I'm trying not to swear because like, <laughs> dude, I thought this was digital artwork at first, okay? So then, I, you know, I look oil on panel, 
It's like, get, no, no. And then I'm looking at it like, do you have video of this process at all by any chance? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Where can we see? I need, I, I don't, I'm not even, I'm going to follow you on Instagram right, right now. now. I want to know where I can see video of this process. Okay. Because so I do have time lapses of ones I've done uh, before, and I'd have to find them. But I've been trying to shoot more time lapses recently. Okay. And so you have a YouTube page or? Uh, well, the time Facebook? lapses are, some of them are on my Instagram. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think What's that, that Instagram uh, handle. Go ahead, throw it out there, people. Oh, I want it's, to it's on that screen. Eric does art things. I'm on it right oh, now. See, there we go. Eric does. Okay. Yeah. There used things. to be Eric plays eight strings, and now it's Eric does art things. Because I was like, eh, I want something that kind of rhymes, kind of similar. Yeah, if you go into his reels, you can see it. That's really cool, Eric. That is so. Yeah, I'm really fascinated by the process um i also play music and make art and i i do always think it's fascinating when people do both and how it, it relates to others i know a few people on here alan constant who you just saw butch mccarthy who's coming up kat newson who's um part of this you know the interplay between being a musician and artist is always fascinating to me yeah and the way that you're using these these tools but to me there is emotion i i feel like i'm like you must be listening to a certain kind of music while you're doing this because i there's there's so much motion to it Oh, really really cool colors and everything on that. Other we have one. a question. Let me see. Oh, so there was a question about your connection to New Bedford and how you knew about this, given that you live in Ann Arbor. Um, yeah, let us know how you heard about this event. Um, actually, I was uh, in the Detroit Breakfast Club and I heard about the New Bedford uh like artist club starting up and I was like, oh, I wanna go check it out and see how it is. And I heard this was the first one. I was like, oh, this will be really fun. Awesome, yeah, we're so, I've been to Ann Arbor before, really cool city. And for anybody that that um, didn't hear that this is based on um, a platform that's been used in Detroit for a while and we're really happy that that you joined us tonight. I think you. All for right, it. awesome, thank um, you so much. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. Okay. So about the painting freezing, I named it that because I made it during the winter and I had the windows open to blow out like the solvent. <laughs> and so I was like freezing when I like finished it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank nice. you for adding that. That's great. Nice. Right? Right? All righty. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much brother. Yeah. Our next artist up is Lauren Sweeney. And this one, at first glance, I actually thought it was like, I looked at it real quick. I thought it was like a sculpture. I thought it was a real knocker um, that somebody was selling. So I was like, oh, somebody's putting three dimensional pieces in here. And no, it was um, acrylic painting <laughs> of an Italian door. So uh, Laureen, go, go for it. Please uh, explain more. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear you. Okay. Um, I traveled a lot in Europe and as I moved around, I noticed that everything in Europe is beautiful <laughs> because it's all artistic. I mean, everything. And I got really got into door knockers in Tuscany. These door knockers have been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. I did a little research on the internet. The first door knockers were actually slaves chained to the door in ancient Greece. I just thought that was kind of interesting. So what I did is I decided that I wanted to do a series of door knockers. And in Tuscany, they are um, images of queens, of hands, of lions, of Satan, um, geometric 
shapes. They are just absolutely beautiful. This is one that I chose um, to do, and I decided that I needed to make a door uh, texture to go with it. And I wanted to suggest the age of the door knocker. And that's how I came up with this design. I yeah, tend yeah. To, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Pardon me. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, so I'm just in love with uh, door knockers from Tuscany. They are just beautiful. I also paint birds and um, mammals. Um, I love my garden. I love gardens, but I don't like gardens that are neat. I like gardens that where the flowers are all mixed up. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice if you could take a group of shells throw them up in the air and have them land on the ground. And that would be a shell garden. And that's where I came up with that idea. Um, I did a, a group of them. This is one of my favorites. Um, I like that they look like they were just dropped and they're probably in the water because you can see the movement of the seagrass. All of my paintings are done in acrylic um, or watercolor. And this one, I know it says acrylic, but are you adding some water to it to thin out yeah. the, the paint? Okay. Oh, yeah. Because yes. it definitely has like a watercolor feel to it. Yes, it does. Definitely. Yes. Yes. And a little bit of pen as well. Yes. Yeah. Wow. This one's great. Yeah. I like paintings with contrast. Um, that's really important to me. Um, I like light. I like dark and I like something in between. And I tend to paint that way. And with this one, were you using a photograph or some shells in front of you? Um, no, what I did is I, um, I went to uh, Rhode Island School of Design where they have a shell collection and I photographed their shells. And then when I came home, I, in my mind, I threw some up in the air and let them fall. And that's what came up. Um, so it's a very arbitrary arrangement. And um, I work directly from the individual uh, photograph of a shell. And then I decide what shell I want to put it next to. Awesome. Yeah, this is great. Any weird. Fitz, any questions before we? Um, I, I wanted to go back to the door knocker. Um, yeah. So of this series, how many are in this series? Um, wow. I would say I probably have six. I know I did a queen. I have several with a hand. Um, they seem to take door knockers literally in uh, Italy. So I have some with a hand. Um, oh, I have a devil, a devil or two, two. They're big. They're, uh, yeah, 16 by 12. Yeah. And my devil is all black. And why anybody would want to <laughs> knock at that door with that devil on it is beyond me because that would scare me away. Right well, on. beautiful work, Lori, and very excited to see this. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Susan Gilmore, who always brings it with the color. I'm very excited to see this. Always. Hey, guys. This is great. I love this. This is such a great con concept. And thank you so much for including me. 
especially since the, it's the first one. So <clears throat> to begin, um, I am a graduate of the Swain School of Design and I have a BFA in sculpture. And I was a graphic designer and art director for almost 40 years. And I learned how to paint with Sig Haynes while studying at the foundation program at the Swain School of Design. And while learning how to use color in my sculptures, I would paint landscapes to help strengthen my color vocabulary. And the other key ingredient to my pictures that you need to know about me is that I needed, I've always needed to live near the ocean. And because I knew the seaside was my muse, it made sense for me to move to Wareham, a town with 54 miles of coastline. So this first one, Gale Force, was inspired by a series of adventurous pen air outings that occurred at the entrance of the Cape Cod jetty on Buzzards Bay. What I'd do is I'd park my car over by a Little Harbor golf course and I'd bicycle several miles along the service road until I found the perfect location. And, um, you know, I went there a whole bunch of times and probably created about eight or 10 30 by 11 oil pastel drawings. And also this particular area is where I spend a lot of time sailing. So um, now many years later, because I've retired, I have time to work much larger. So in January of 2019, I decided to work on 48 by 24 canvases. And I used several of my oil pastel drawings from the earlier pen air outing. And um, these became studies for Gale Force and eight other large paintings. Um, I don't copy nature as we see it, but rather I try to forge a relationship with the view I'm painting. So Gale Force is an example of the intense, fiery passion I have for what I'm seeing and feeling when I paint landscapes. And the whole deal with me sailing and my passion for that um, just completely comes together to help me build these pictures. Um, the second picture, the untitled painting, was created from my imagination and all my memories of observing and studying nature. I spend a lot of time, especially in my sailboat, observing the sky, the clouds, the ocean, the land. And this process combined with my passion for the ocean has contributed to shaping my way of seeing. So that's pretty much it. Um, as far as composition, um, <clears throat> I am greatly influenced particularly when I was younger uh, by Kandinsky and his blue period and kind of that riding on the edge of abstraction and figurative painting. And um, I really um, have never completely slid into the abstract zone, but I'm working on it, baby. I'm getting there. So uh, I guess if anybody has any questions or comments, they can shoot me an email. And if you want to come by for a studio visit, go for it. These are great. This this one in front of us reminds me of, you know, when you're sitting on a plane and you're looking at the landscape. I was just picturing you like at the window seat of a plane looking out um, where you can have that aerial. It has a bit of that aerial view of it that I love. Yeah, I'm very, um, I really like to be up high and looking down. So that was one of the things I really liked. I, I go to um, the jetties in the area a lot because they're, uh, they're pretty much, you know, not at sand level. They're always like 25 feet or a little bit higher. And I like that perspective. I like looking down. Nice. That's a whole vibe right there with that color. Yeah. I love your use of like the, the lime green that really pops. Thanks. My question would be, um, 
Oh. Did you start painting and then got into graphic design or graphic design and then painting? Oh boy, that's a big question. So I, I've uh, been an artist my whole life. And <clears throat> if when I told my parents, <laughs> they weren't too happy about that. And um, so they liked the idea of a trade. So um, yeah, dad, I'll, I'll be a graphic designer, sure thing, you know? So I basically went to Swain School thinking I was gonna be a graphic designer, um, went through the sophomore reviews, told them I was gonna be a graphic designer. And the first day of junior year, I dropped out of graphic design and became a sculptor and didn't tell my parents about it for a long time. <laughs> but uh, okay. the truth of the matter is um, that when I was younger, I had the opportunity to do learn technical illustration and do graphic design. So I had um, experience and knew what I was heading towards. Um, and I, I really knew that I wanted to learn about color and design and, uh, and um, you know, other aspects of art. I, uh, I was so um, just invigorated and enthralled when I was in school and it pretty much blew me away. And um, I really like sculpture because at the end of the day, in sculpture, you can do everything, you know, you can do printmaking, you can do graphics, just make it three dimensional and it happens, you know, and painting, of course. So, uh, you know, I, um, I didn't travel too far and it's tough to get work as an artist back in the uh, early seven or late seventies, early, early eighties and graphic, graphic design was, um, you know, one job you could pretty much get. So I put my foot, my big fat foot in the door as a paste up artist and climbed my butt up the ladder. It's basically how that happened. So, and I held on cause you know, I had a good insurance plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Right on, right on. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thank uh, you. Susan, I appreciate you uh, being on this inaugural visit with us. Yeah, I, I, I'm loving it. Excellent, excellent. All right, all right. So up next, uh, last but not least, we have the one and only Butch McCarthy. I'm a fan myself. So, um, and UHF, I already know on this next piece, <laughs> some folks aren't even gonna know what that is. So okay. I'll let Butch, <laughs> but you take it away, brother. Go for it. Go for it. No, well, this piece uh, is pretty new. I think I did it two weeks ago. Um, I had a series maybe three years ago where I did a lot of televisions. I'm crazy about TVs. I like the the shape. I like the little dials on them. Just the the details of it and. Um, I decided to go back to it. So I actually have three or four of them around here somewhere now. But this is acrylic on canvas. I usually paint the sides black and do an underpaint. You know, I underpaint quite a bit. Usually the uh, complementary color of the main color of the painting. So this would be like a pink underneath. And, um, Somehow I, I, I came across this green, <laughs> uh, it's, it's called light olive. And it just, to me, it's, it's the color of those old 50s and 60s television screens. It's almost like a tube color. But I, you know, I enjoy doing this. I, I was, uh, I've been a musician for 50 years and my father was a painter, a hobbyist, and it was, there was always art supplies around the house. So I've been sketching and drawing and painting all my life, but never seriously until about 10 years ago. Uh, this one's 24 by 30. Lately, I've been doing large scale paintings uh, because they take longer. <laughs> and I have lots of time. And I just, I just love the scale of these. 
on a nice big white wall. There's, some, there's something about a large scale painting that I like. So yeah, even this one's blue vase. Uh, actually, I've changed it a bit. It's right behind me. <laughs> so I've kind of darkened up the uh, the vase a little bit. I'm always tinkering with it. Of course, you're seeing it backwards. Uh, this one, you know, both these paintings I worked without a model. There was no photograph. These are like in my head. And um, that TV too, that's all in your head? Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I don't, I don't know what that means, but it's I, I don't, I, that's just something I can't do. So I think that's just really cool. Well, I, I've done maybe 20 paintings of TVs. So I have like a template in my brain. <laughs> so I know what I have to do. And I know, you know, I make little variations on each one. I put the dials in different places. I put the speaker in a different place. You know, the, the legs might be a little different, the, the shape of the screen. It might have rabbit ears, it might not have rabbit ears, you know, so. And, <laughs> and I have, this This is only like four colors, so maybe five. Yeah. So this was an easy one. This one maybe took one day to do. But the, uh, the one, the blue vase one, if you want to go back to that, um, I call it blue vase because the only permanent thing in the painting is the blue vase. It's a solid piece and everything else, the shadows, the background, light, the, uh, the cut flowers, they'll all be gone soon, but the vase remains. And I don't know what the symbolism of that is, but <laughs> it, uh, that's what I was going for, to just to keep the, and everything else is sort of a sort of vaguely painted, sort of impressionistic, but the vase is sort of solid and realistic. Butch, I know you Butch. mentioned. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You go. Oh, you go, Fitz. Okay. I know you mentioned your your father was a painter, but uh, was that the main inspiration in in you moving from music to painting, or was there an, is there another story in there? Well, I've always done both. So, you know, when I was six years old, I started piano lessons. And at the time, my father was painting as a hobbyist. And of course, there was always paint and sketching material. So all my life, I've been dabbling in paint, painting and drawing. And uh, I actually went to Swain. You know, people talk about going to Swain School. I went to the Swain School Saturday morning session for children and <laughs> and uh, I learned a lot doing that but I never went to, I never had any formal training I'm, I'm self-taught except for what my dad showed me right on right yeah. on Did there is a question that came in about your compositions and how you plan them um well you know I used the the third thing and <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it because I'm not a not really a trained artist but you know I don't center things of course except for the tv one I, that's more like a I don't know it's kitschy so I, I, I don't mind breaking rules and putting it right in the middle of the canvas but of course this is kind of off to the side like I get a, a lot of amateurs always ask me you know, why don't you put it in the middle? Uh, <laughs> but you know, and I just want to say, this is a this is a great thing that you're doing, and I also have to say, Eric Smith's stuff was freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> that was it; just knocked me out. So, Eric, I don't know if you can hear me, but man, that was some cool stuff. Thank you. So if you have any other questions, anybody wants to come by my studio. I have a studio right in my apartment and all you have to do is send me a message. You can come by and see it in person. It's always a little bit different. Photographs don't always do it justice, but 
Uh, I do my best when I do uh, when I do photographs. I try to make it look exactly like the painting, but it's there's always some sort of slightly different look to it if you see it in person. So I'm always available. Awesome! Thank you so much, Butch. You're welcome. Um, everyone did awesome. Um, just want to tell everybody to definitely stick around because artists can interact with each other. Attendees can um, ask questions. And just a reminder, if you are interested in purchasing any artwork, please reach out to the artist directly. You can find their information at newbedfordlight.org at the Fine Arts Club. And yeah, definitely stick around. Um, what everybody can do is hit that audio button and um, we'll, you can be seen, you can be heard. And we're just gonna open up the chat. Maybe. Okay. How about we first just do a round of applause for like everybody? Yeah. You guys <laughs> Thank you for the artist showing up. That was, that was amazing. I like hearing all the background stories. Um, and the inspirations to those things, so cool, so cool to you know get the the behind the scenes inside the the mind of processes and inspirations. It's I'm I'm glad to be a part of the project. Thanks for you know inviting me to be a host. Yay, in the Bedford Light. <laughs> Very cool. Definitely. Oh, it was nice being a part of this. Right on, right on. This is the first crew to run through. Oh, it was, it was an interesting process to uh, to be running through, um, and um, I think that uh, you managed to pick a wide range of, of uh, interesting work, to say the least. Um, I, I, one thing I meant to mention, and I'm just going to throw it out there, is that um, I encourage people to to go to my website and see like the majority of the work that is not just the, the um, Palabolus work, but if you go to look at the Palabolus work, also go look at the video because it'll show you the difference between seeing light through an image and <laughs> off of an image. And that's a very different thing when you see stuff on a computer and when you see stuff um, where you're seeing the light actually reflected. Um, and it, it, it helps people to get a sense of those differences. And uh, we can also take this time to, uh, I know a lot of you artists wear many hats um, and we can, just because you kind of started off then, you can kind of throw out, like, I know you got SG, you have workshops that you do, different things that are uh, not just being the artist, but the other things you help facilitate. Go ahead and plug that stuff. Um, and uh, the rest of you, if there's some other stuff after Den goes, feel free to chime in uh, because it's good to know, you know, the other things we do. We're, a lot of folks think we're just artists, but we're like the publicity people, the graphic designer, the, the photographer, the legal team, the moral support, <laughs> all of those things. So oh, yeah. if, it's, if there's other services that you provide, kind of like I know definitely Den does, some of you may, you know, throw that stuff out there. So go for it, Den. Sure. Well, I have a number of companies. I've been a, a um, international management consultant since the early '80s, but um, but locally here, um, I run SNG Project Gallery Art Brokerage, which tries to put local artists um, into um, local businesses, put them up on the walls. Uh, you probably some of you may have seen when we did um, the fifty art pieces that went into the um, the Candleworks building when Bristol County Savings took that over. We, we brokered all the art for that. Um, and we're constantly doing that kind of stuff and curation. So um, we're looking, we're, we're now on the vendor list for the, um, for the uh, wind farm uh, industry. So we're hoping to get some, some local artists into their offices as well. Um, and practice best practice is something that um, is last few years, uh, eight, since uh, 2018, which is a series of workshops um, helping to deal with the intersection of um, artists, uh, creatives, musicians, everybody, um, and the organizations and the businesses that they interact with, trying to find ways to, um, to 
have win-wins rather than um, exploitation. And I don't think that the exploitation is often advertent, but um, the inadvertent exploitation is just as bad. So we're trying to train people on that. Um, our next workshop is actually gonna be um, pay equity and justice for freelancers. Um, and that's gonna be geared towards both funders, um, organizations that pay freelancers mm -hmm. and the freelancers themselves. And it includes a calculator for how to figure out what that hourly rate that doesn't have any, um, any benefits attached turns out to as if you were a, an employee. Um, so it turns out that it's a, it's a lot more than you think. Uh, the, I mean, it's a lot less than you think. We, um, <clears throat> we, started, we did this one because we were seeing that we were starting to see too many people being offered uh, $20, $25 an hour, um, no benefits, which when you do the real calculations, that turns out to be about eight bucks an hour and that's slave wages. Um, so we're gonna be working on that. We, we started with un, um, ex showing for exposure and other classic artist mistakes and how to get yourself paid. Um, so you can see all of the past workshops on our website, practice.bestpractice.com. Um, practice and uh, sign up on our, our um, Facebook or sign up on our email and you'll get to know when the other stuff is coming up. Uh, before, uh, I'd like to also introduce uh, another uh, DFABC, uh, Detroit Fine Arts Breakfast Club member uh, and also photographer, Den. Uh, Glenn uh, Kujatsu, uh, he's the gentleman that's behind that. Well, it actually kind of looks like our our downtown, our historic area behind Glenn. But uh, thank you, Glenn, for uh, for for dropping in. Um, this is uh, this is really called really cool to see all this coming coming to fruition. That's for sure. Well, well thank you, Ron. I certainly do appreciate that. Uh, and again, I'm a member of the Breakfast Club in Detroit. However. I like artists anywhere and everywhere, and obviously you guys are on the other side of the world. <laughs> Practically. <laughs> hey, just by way of introducing myself a little uh, more thoroughly, um, I am actually a high school English teacher, um, and I love my job, and I love working with the kids, and um, Besides that, when I'm not um, doing the painting, I am learning the jazz guitar, and that's a great process for me. It's been a long time coming, and um, so Shelly, yeah, right on with the with the connection between the music and the visual arts, and uh, you know, likewise to the others as well. So, um, but yeah, that's me. But hey, Dan, um, thanks for the info on that new project you're interested in. I was fortunate enough to participate in the bank project uh, and I would love to be considered or hear, at least hear about the parameters for the uh, wind farm piece as well. I will certainly I will certainly let people know when um, I actually start working on any given specific project. Um, I usually work with the um, with the business to figure out what they're trying to accomplish, what kind of theme or feel they want. And then I go out and find artists. But I, I have you still on my list from the last time. Terrific. Thanks. Thank you. And, and again, thank you all very, uh, very much. Um, I've enjoyed participating and I feel um, really humble and blessed. So thanks. Yeah. Well, one thing, one thing um, that is pretty interesting to me is uh, all the uh, musicians that seem to be here. Uh, I didn't say anything about it, but I'm, I'm actually a professional musician myself. I have been um, in, um, in uh, rock and roll tribute bands for the past uh, probably about 14 years or so. And I've played in um, other cover bands before that. I was in a band called the Petty Larceny Band. I'm a, key, I'm a keyboard player and I'm, I'm actually uh, uh, teaching myself uh, guitar right now, bas basically uh, acoustic guitar. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is that um, the background uh, that a lot of people were saying that they came from having to do with the um, Swain School of Design and uh, SMU and uh, UMass Dartmouth, which uh, that all eventually turned into um, three artists that uh, were, well, one of his work wasn't featured, but three of us here tonight are graduates of the same class of 1975 in the School of, um, School of the Arts at um, what was then uh, SMU in uh, in painting, uh, Dave Dower and Ron Fortier and myself. You took the words out of my mouth, uh, Dave. I was going to say that this, you know it's always that Swain influence, but uh, we 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 have that Smoo influence influence as well. The SMU folks. Thank you. And as as you can see behind me, um, 
there's craziness behind you know with me too all the time yeah i'll put in a plug i'm a musician and i have a gig saturday at rose alley three o'clock you get home by six and you'll be in bed by you know by eight o'clock so <laughs> it's the new midnight i've actually actually heard of you before um, is it called a butch mccarthy band or something like that no, it depends what band it is, but Butch McCarthy and the Gentleman of Leisure. Yeah, That's I know. I must have seen your uh, musical work or the band you were in on on uh, Facebook. Oh, maybe maybe we should all get together and jam sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and to put Cat on the spot, Cat is one of the founding members of this event. And Cat, I saw that you also have a music show in one of the downtown galleries. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Thank you so much, Shelly. But before I do that, I just wanted to applaud, commend, and say congratulations to the team. I've been watching, I, I was able to watch the full first part with all of the artists presenting, and I was looking at the structure. I was taking notes about, you know, different things that were working really well. I loved how you and Fitz were kind of to help to carry on the conversation. Everything with the technology component, Brandon, absolutely fantastic. So I just wanted to first shout out you know, and Ron, you know, Fortier, like for having this idea to start this kind of a event for New, Bed New Bedford art scene. I'm just like, it's so amazing to see it come to life. So I just want to commend you all first, you know, everyone that became a part of this first event. New Bedford definitely needs something like this. It's definitely benefiting. And it's so neat to see uh, members of both the visual art and the music community mixing. So I, that, that's absolutely fantastic. Like I, that sings, sings to my heart. Um, I guess that's a good uh, chance to transition. So um, I don't know if anyone knows uh, musician Mike Heffernan, Michael Heffernan. He's uh, an amazing guitar player um, who lives in New Bedford. We have a little group that we started to form back in October and um, we have our first event. Well, it's technically our second performance together. Um, we have this little group we called, it's called Long Swan. Um, the name of that is a, a story for another time, but uh, how we came up with that name is a story for another time. But no, we're, we're going to be performing at Interwoven um, this coming Monday. Is it from, what time is it, Mike? Six, six to eight, I think. Uh, yeah, six to eight. I believe it's six to eight at uh, Inter Interweave, Interwoven. Rhonda, don't be mad. I, I always confuse it. It's either Interweave or Interwoven, but it's this amazing venue downtown New Bedford. Um, and Mike Kevin and I are going to be playing there. Yeah. But again, I don't want to take up too much space. Again, Really amazing job, really great production. Thank you so much, Ron, for well, having this idea. Just, just, to, just to roll this back, is you know, I, I'm hopefully want to just fade away from all of this, but I told Kat about this. She's she was so enthusiastic. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. So we started planning about it, and then it went to sleep a little bit because we had some logistics to, to work out. And all of those logistics, uh, when I introduced it to Barbara, uh, just got wiped out because she said, "I'll take care of everything." <laughs> <laughs> so here we are yeah. here we are and i uh, just really quick uh, john watch uh john which uh has a a, a little memento from smu which i always thought was kind of cool uh you can see the uh it's it looks like the department of transportation logo i don't know why they ever did that but it does have my name on it but they ah. just spelled it it's f-o-r-t-i-o-r -R on that and it's, that's wrong <laughs> <laughs> but seriously the name is there yeah i, I want to say hi to mike um mike used to come to the open mic that our tevitz and i ran for 13 years downtown at uh the cafe arpeggio good to see you're still playing mike thank you thank you guys. well i went to uh smu in 1969 to 1971 and uh i mean first my first year, the first half of my first year, the students were all out on strike because of the Vietnam War and the, um, the president was denying tenure to professors who um, were siding with, you know, protesting against the war. So we all went out on strike. So that was my first year of college, it was like the six months on strike. It was great. Well, the <laughs> students, the students, uh, yeah, the student senate <laughs> president slapped Driscoll across the face yeah. in front of group one building it, that was like the slap uh well it was the slap heard around the world until Will Smith uh, popped in but um and, and you'll you'll just to, as an aside those of you who know the campus um the um campanile the tower in the middle is um 
uh, semi affectionately referred to as Driscoll's last direction. Oh. <laughs> uh, on a serious note on that one, uh, that was we were able to go into that whenever we wanted, but unfortunately, the Texas Tower murders. Uh, the mass shooting uh, in Texas uh, shut that down, and it's been shut down ever since. It's, so there's a lot of history, you know, it's, it's a, a lot of things that are uh, going on. I used to tell my students about uh, May Day, free chicken and beer, and uh, they just would think I was pulling their leg. But no, it was a whole different world back then, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, the, the back of this uh, shot glass reads, Winter Carnival, February 7th, 1970. It was a different world. <laughs> Are any of you going to be showing in the uh, South Oak, South Coast uh, artist show uh, for the uh, the art tour at uh, Didi Shatnick Gallery this uh, month? I've got uh, three pieces going in there for my uh, New Bedford Arctic Wheeling Disaster series. Yeah, I have three pieces in the show too. guess we're the only ones. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about that show or is that too off topic? I'm sorry, Bobby, for interrupting. No, no. I, just, just before you go on, I just want to say one thing before I forget. In addition to, oh my God, this has been so awesome. Um, we have an arts and culture calendar that we run every week. We update every week and we're trying to get more and more um, events or just like smaller happenings in there so that we go beyond the kind of institutional stuff. Uh, people, you know, organizations that have PR people who send our stuff, send us stuff. That's all great. We want that stuff. But some of these interesting smaller events that you guys are talking about, please, please send, send them to us at calendar at newbedfordlight.org and we will get the word out. So, and tell your friends, tell your, you know, anybody, you know, send us the stuff we want to get beyond the, you know, the, the major institutions. And I want to congratulate you at all at New Bedford Light for the great stuff you've been doing. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's a, uh, it's a challenge and um, just really, really appreciate the support that we're getting from the community, which is kind of a shock to me. I'm used to working for larger media organizations where you're in a kind of adversary uh, relationship with the community. And we just, we are overwhelmed by the emails and the communications we get from people in the New Bedford area who are just grateful for what we're doing. Uh, not so much from officialdom, which is, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think they could probably do without us. Uh, but really, this is just a very important uh, event, important night for us to, to um, get beyond the more traditional uh, media fair and engage different uh, segments of our community in more participatory uh, kind of journalism. We are, we are uh, an adventure of sorts, the New Bedford Light, and we, uh, we're not an innovation, we're an invention. And um, so really appreciate you all stepping up, uh, especially Ron and Kat and our whole team, <laughs> our whole newsroom team, which, uh, you know, I don't think any of them have ever been part of anything like this before. And that's really invigorating to us. That's really inspiring to us. And um, the more we can do that, the more you can share the, the word about what the New Bedford Light is trying to do, which is this kind of, I don't know if it's unique. I, I, I have no idea, but it's this combination of hard hitting journalism and celebration of culture and uh, not a lot else. So we're not trying to be all things to all people. We're trying to really be strategic about what we think is the most important work uh, that matters to the city uh, and the region. So just spread the word, please subscribe to our free, we're free, we're free to the community. That's really important to us. You don't have to pay for our content 
but you know we do need uh, support, financial support, but your participation is at least as important, if not more important than financial support. So just thank you for, for doing this and send your ideas. Um, editor at newbedfordlight.org. Mm -hmm. I, I, will, I will listen and respond. And uh, again, calendar at newbedfordlight.org. That's where, again, these, these smaller kind of venues and smaller kind of events, um, we want to have that in our, in our calendar. So I'll well, be quiet, but thank you. I very, much, I very much understand what it's like to take a risk when you're trying to do something and people say, that's never going to work. Um, but you say, Talk to me in a couple of years. Um, been there, done that, rooting for you. Uh, I would be Thanks remiss so to uh, not uh, mention the two people that just were minding their own business in Detroit almost 11 years ago, having breakfast. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one gentleman was, uh, was an art uh, and antiques dealer trying to please his friend and cut and collector art collector you know and going over this is what i have this is what i can get so on and so forth and then another gentleman and joined them and another person and another person and another person and it became the the detroit fine arts breakfast club and uh, those two gentlemen are henry uh harper and harold braggs and um talk about an organic <laughs> organic structure this thing has just grown and um I know they're they're really really happy that uh, this is we're either their legitimate or illegitimate child, but it doesn't really matter. We're progeny, so <laughs> you know. Uh, I just wanted to thank them. Uh, and uh, in another note, I don't want to uh, take any more time. Uh, <clears throat> the Artist Index is introducing a new feature, um, even though we're bringing on uh, four other podcasters to try to cover the plethora of artists in in the South Coast. Um, it's still not enough people to get everybody. Um, and um, so the new video feature is uh, actually powered by Video Ask. And um, it gives you two minutes to, um, to tell your story. It's video. So you, you can choose to use video. You can use to, to strictly audio or you can use text or you can use a combination. Um, but it, it gets your name out there. Uh, Harold, uh, uh, Henry, especially in, in Detroit, is always talking about, you know, did you sign your painting? Uh, you know, uh, what are you doing to, to uh, get yourself into the big book of, of, you know, recognized artists and such? And it's really, really important, especially because he's a secondary market dealer, uh, primarily, which counts, sounds, sounds kind of weird. He's a secondary market dealer, primarily. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> so... This will help get more uh, artist names into our directory. It's all going into the archives at the New Bedford Whaling Museum uh, in perpetuity so that your great, 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 great grandchildren can uh, see or hear or, uh, or uh, uh, find out a little bit about uh, their, their relatives. So uh, it's theartistindex.com. I put it on the chat. Thanks so much. Yeah, and thank you, Ron, again, um, for organizing, you know, the Artist Index for kind of being the, the idea initiator for this event. You know, thank you very much for, for starting that. You're welcome. Thank you. One more, one more ad. So we're hoping to, uh, COVID willing, uh, move from Zoom to in-person. And mm -hmm. so we'll let you know about that. But that's really the Detroit model also is to have it be uh, organic kind of social gathering. And um, our newsroom is located at Kilburn Mill. And we expect that we'll be able to gather folks there as well in, in the future in person. So stay tuned for that. I think that would really be fun. Oh, hold on a second. Glenn, have you ever participated in the live uh, events at uh, Noni's Sheridan Grill? Oh, uh, yes, I did. I, I had about three years worth of it before we had to stop. And uh, during that time, I captured probably about 15,000 pictures. I would take pictures of the art being presented and the presenter, as well as faces in the audience. Uh, and actually, some of my photographs will be used in a 
historical book, which is being worked on right now. And uh, there were three or four of us uh, photographers that contributed to it. Um, Henry said that the Zoom was a, a necessity. There was no way around it. There was, and for me, thankfully, I mean, my wife is from Detroit. We have family there. I, I wouldn't have been able to wiggle my way <laughs> into, into uh, the, the creative community there if it wasn't for the Zoom meetings. But Henry said that the live uh, events are so electric. It's, it's like a combination of world, world uh, wrestling, uh, a circus, uh, a, a, a hash house. I mean, it's all these things all going on at the same time. And uh, the sales seem to, there are more sales during the live event than there are uh, during the Zoom events. So that, that I'm really looking forward to us doing that as soon as we possibly can. Yes, they are. And let me give you a little flavor of what these events were like. Uh, the meeting would start at five o'clock. However, people would often arrive there at three o'clock in the afternoon to hold a seat so they'd have a place to sit down. Uh, and then as people filtered in, you uh, signed up for your time slot and you were taken in order that you signed up. And when this happened, often as many as 50 to 60 artists would show up with two to three pieces in their hand. So can you imagine this, a diner with 50 or 60 people plus another 50 or 60 people that were just standing there watching the whole event. So it was quite an event. Well, um, I'm going to take this opportunity to say again, thank you. This was an amazing event. I loved hearing stories and a little bit of background about each and every one of the artists that I got to see present. And I took a lot of screenshots. I might be reaching out to a couple of you uh, for some inquiries potentially because um, as an art, I went to, to school at UMass and I, I'm an art teacher at Bristol Community College. And, and when I see good design and I see good material like craftsmanship, I just, I absolutely love it and appreciate it. So really thank you all for sharing your work. Thank you, Ron, for, you know, beginning this event, Bobby, or just thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, organizing this and everyone who worked on the team to bring it to life. Absolutely incredible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start practice. We have a performance coming up on Monday again at Interwoven. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, start practicing for, for that event. Thank you again, everybody so much for sharing your work. All right, break a leg. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Kat. Bobby, is this Bye, being Shelley. recorded, great by job, the way? Great job, Shelly. Really great job. Oh, thanks for asking me, Kat. So it is being recorded, and we will be uh, posting it on our website, newbedfordlight.org, also all our media platforms, uh, social media platforms. So, um, you know, we had good uh, a good number of people attending tonight, but really the audience comes after uh, as we circulate the recording. And just, we'll, just to know, be we'll, fully clear, I recorded yeah. the first hour. I actually stopped the recording before the afternoon. Well, that's probably a good thing, Brenda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So the first hour will be available. You know, for, for I think it's fine to have hour, until we went like into the afternoon. off the record. You know. Yeah, exactly. That's what I figured. <laughs> yeah, thank Vegas you. Vegas rules. That right? could that could be like um a part of the event description where like the afterglow is like yes. you know just whatever happens happens and it's like comes so you could be a part of like and catch up off with all the, the different folks. Yes, there. off the record. Yeah. Maybe we should call afterglow off the record. After, yeah, I, yeah, like lounge yeah. hour. Um, yeah, catch yeah. up time. Um, no, I don't know, whatever sounds fun. So also send, you know, send me your thoughts about what we can do the next time, how we can do it differently and how we can spread the word and just get more um, artists, maybe those who are, um, you know, not in the flow, uh, getting them, getting them into to this system and exposing their work and, and all of that. Just thank you all so much for stepping up when you didn't really know what you were getting into. Um, really, really appreciate that, that sense of, that intrepid sense of, of adventure. And if you, if you sell anything, um, please post, I mean, you don't have to put the pricing, that's no, no one's business, but your own and the buyer, but please post it and say, it was through the New Bedford Light Fine Art Club, because that's gonna make a big difference. That's gonna get more people to wanna you know, come in Hopefully it'll be like chum for the sharks. So. <laughs> <laughs>
but keep us informed as you continue to develop this too. I assume we will sit back for the next few because we've been on the first one, but um, but we want to know what you're continuing to do and how you're continuing to progress um, as well. So um, that's that's I think very valuable for the rest of us who who were here for the first one. Yeah. And do encourage people. We do encourage people to register for the second one. Because hopefully we want to get to the point where, where it's like was like Noni's, like Glenn was saying, showing up at three o'clock for a five o'clock meeting. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want to get in there because it's working for you. And so that's important. When is the next one? Brendan? I, I'm not sure. I believe it's May 18th, which would make that the third Wednesday yeah. of the month. Here we go. We got a slide. It's May. May. May 18th, but we will putting we'll be promoting it again on all of our uh, you know our platforms, our digital platforms, and getting the word out there and and we just ask you to share and spread <laughs> spread the word. And if we're lucky, we might be able to do it in person by June, but we'll see what happens. See what happens with the pandemic. The link for the form that you filled out as an artist, if you want to share that with anybody, that link doesn't change for every week. So it's the same link that you uh, went to to fill out the form for this meeting, for the next meeting, if you want to share it with anyone. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank everybody as well. I appreciate the opportunity. Same here. Same here. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I, I would have liked to seen art from our two hosts too. That would have been a nice touch. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. Next that's time. A, yes, absolutely. That's a that's a good one. I'd love to show off. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time we'll be on the other end. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I no, I, I would be mind being on the other end. Okay, we will still be hosting. We'll still be hosting. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I should announce I'm currently selling like all the art I've ever made um, out of my attic. So if anybody lives in the area and wants to come by, make an appointment with me. It's been kind of fun watching people dig through and see what they find for stuff from college years and over the years. So if you want some cheap art, come on over. I have a few Shelly Cadus on my wall. All right. Thanks, Butch. <laughs> If I'm ever in the area, I'll come out there for sure. All right. <laughs>